We are living in a computer programmed reality, and the only clue we have to it is when some variable is changed. This man is one of the most fascinating writers of our 100 short stories. He died in 1982, but his stories live on today through film and mainstream media. I'm going to go over his life and literary work, and his author's name is Philip K. Dick. After covering some of these mainstream movies, I'm going to cover other films that may not be direct adaptations. These other works of art were either directly influenced, or they may have extremely similar in substance and theme as claimed by the filmmakers themselves. A lot of his work explores identity that comes up over and over. Who am I? Is this happening right now? If the creator of Star Wars, Mr. George Lucas, or the creator of Star Trek, Mr. Gene Rodenberry, were the fathers of our most popular and lucrative science fiction works of art, then I guess Philip K. Dick would be one of our creepy uncles that our parents won't let us hang out with. Besides being a little bit of loon, he was known to be taking drugs and have detachment at times from reality. Philip K. Dick was a master storyteller. 45 novels and over 120 short stories officially to his name. Some of the movies have been directed by Paul Vorheeren, Ridley Scott, John Woo, and even Steven Spielberg. Since he died in 1982, just before the release of Blade Runner, superfans and engineers have been working tirelessly to build a Philip K. Dick robot, a life-size robot that can actually answer real questions. One of his most famous events he was known for at the time, in September of 1977, he addressed an audience of fans in Metz, France. They expected him to speak about his sci-fi books and the recent release of Star Wars. He's suddenly making reports that he knew that beyond a shadow of a doubt that we were living inside a computer reality. His first movie that they made in 1982 that was released just after his death was called Blade Runner. This explored the idea of dangerous androids which we used for slave labor on off-world colonies and we followed Harrison Ford as a detective that chased and hunted down and killed or retired these androids. A continuation of the story was made in 2017 called Blade Runner 2049 and it was set 40 years later starring again Harrison Ford for a very short time in the film. The movie itself was a bomb at the box office however was a visual masterpiece. Stylized special effects and atmosphere just an all-around great movie. This movie was based on a short story called Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? In 1990, the second movie came out called Total Recall, based on a short story called We Can Remember For You Wholesale from 1966. The film tells the story of a construction worker who finds himself suddenly embroiled in espionage on Mars, unable to determine if the experience are real or his own, or if he's had memory implants. He just wanted the memory of a of a vacation. However, Arnold Schwarzenegger ends up battling evil corporation on Mars. In 1999, they made a terrible TV series out of Very Forgettable that lasted less than one season. And again in 2012, the movie was completely remade, leaving off the Mars subplot line. And still, again, both stories revolve around a man who goes up for a memory implant. The next movie on our list is PKD's 1953 a uh, story, short story that appeared in Second Variety. This addressed themes commonly found in uh, the author's work. Confusion, conflict, and reality, and illusion. The movie was just terrible and hard to watch with bad special effects and very poor acting. Our next movie in 2001 is called Imposter from the 1953 short story of the same name starring Gary Sinise. Again, it's about an everyday guy that's working for a government, making weapons for an unseen war, and is suddenly suspected of being an android or a robot built by the aliens that we are at war with. He even begins to doubt himself as the story progresses. One of the best films is The Minority Report from a short story written in 1956 starring Tom Cruise who apprehends criminals before they can commit crime based on foreknowledge provided by psychics called the precogs who can see the future. Once again in 2015 another spin-off series was made on this movie however again didn't last one season. 
in 2003, Paycheck was made based on a 1953 short story again of the same name. In 2006, a movie called Scanner Darkly, based on Philip K. Dick's 1977 story of the same name. This was just three years after he made The Matrix. Keanu Reeves starred in this film adaptation. In the film, about 25% of Americans are on this new fictional drug. However, the government is now battling this drug and also using the drug to make profit on the rehab itself. The movie is filmed in rotoscope and makes for a very weird set movie. In 2007, the next movie is called Next, based on The Golden Man from a 1954 short story. It stars Nicolas Cage, who's a man that can see two minutes into his own future. The FBI finds out wants him to push his abilities to find a stolen nuclear bomb. In 2010, a movie was made called Radio Free Albemuth which is based on the novel of the same name from 1976 about a man who keeps getting hit by laser beams from space causing him to change his mind on his school and work and drags his wife to a new location to unravel his whole life the movie hurt my brain just a little bit because inside the movie the main protagonist has a best friend named phil who's writing short stories called minority report and scanner darkly the next movie is from 2011 called The Adjustment Bureau, starring Matt Damon. It's based on a 1954 short story called The Adjustment Team, where a senator meets the love of his life and accidentally steps behind the curtain to discover men with hats, or as we know in the movie as angels, working for a chairperson who we think is God, influencing our choices and lives. They direct him to shut his mouth and forget what he saw, and dump his girlfriend because it's not part of the master plan so he works against them so he can be with her in 2015 amazon took on a new series that's still going on called the man in the high castle this was one of pk dick's biggest novels from 1962 where a what if scenario about what if the nazis in the germany won and now run america in 2017 Till current, they only have one season so far. Amazon took on another project based on short stories, 10 short stories from 1953 to 1954. And it's basing on 10 different short stories that he wrote. Like for example, The Impossible Planet, The Commuter, and The Hanging Stranger. Other similar works that might fit in very similarities and theme that PKD wrote about, however, has not been directly related to. Our list begins in 1983 with Videodrome. James Woods exposes a video signal inside cable access channel for mind control. In 1995, the movie is set in 1999 about a former cop, now street hustler, deals in data discs containing recorded memories and emotions. In 1995, 12 Monkeys, in an alternate future, Bruce Willis time travels to uncover how a deadly virus killed everyone. In 1997, Gattaca is about a man who visits, wants to visit other planets but must lie about his own genetics and flaws. In 1998, several movies were made, one called Dark City where the main character awakes to find he's lost his memory and the whole city has no sunlight. In 1998 as well, The Truman Show Jim Carrey has watched on a real national show for his whole life. Uh, another one is Pi, about a guy who unlocks the stark, uh, stock market with math and is now wanted by the government. Loosely based on PKD's crazy press conference in 1977 in France, the movie in 1999 called The Matrix is based about how we are all trapped in a computer simulation. Later in 2004, Jim Carrey again stars as a girlfriend who's dumped him and wants to visit a new company to erase her memory of him. He decides to get back at her and do the same. In 2010, Inception shows about how dreams are within dreams and can be controlled by others. And lastly, in 2011, In Time tells an alternate universe story about how time is a currency and people now live with digital clocks in their bodies until age 25. As soon as you become age 25, 
You only have 24 hours to live unless you earn time. The rich can live forever and the poor die young. Thanks for watching my video.